One of the most unique features of the Peak District is obviously its moorlands and how we protect those moorlands from fire is a vital part of our work. Now we split across a number of regions, across a number of districts, a number of counties and to combat that we've brought everybody together under the Fires Operations Group. It includes all six fire authorities, it includes major landowners, the three water companies and of course the ranger service and we've come together to see how we can work together to share equipment to make sure that each other's fittings uh, work on each other's equipment and to make sure that we we work in a comprehensive way to tackle the problem of wildfire on the moorlands. As station commander at Glossop Fire Station I've been involved with the fire operations group for many years in fact came on board in 1996 so I've been uh, working with other organisations throughout the years and developing our plans and strategies for dealing with this type of fire. The importance of the Fire Operations Group is that it brings multi-agencies together to tackle these what can be very difficult, very large fires, leaving resources very difficult for one organisation to deal with. Therefore, by pooling resources makes life a lot easier. The ranger service play a key role actually in the fires operations group because what they do, they organise the, the secretariat, they organise the meetings, the regular liaison, uh, they also help organise various training events where we call the partners together and when we have the fire itself the rangers provide a specialist role in support of the fire services so if you had a crew of six firefighters you'd also have a ranger going up with them. We've got our own specialist equipment, we can bring that into play, um, we have certain techniques that we've perfected. Uh, there's an old technique which firefighters are taught at the basic college and then never use of overland open relays and we perfected open relays in the Peak District and that's one of our, our key ways of combating fires in remote locations when it's the peat itself that is burning. Uh, certainly these times of year because we're into nesting time just coming up it's a very very sensitive time so from April until end of July uh, the wildlife's all up in the hills here now uh, and very susceptible to disturbance and once we do have a fire it could be seven eight years before it's ever recovers. Fires are almost always started by people now sometimes it's accidental you know uh, barbecues you know these mobile disposable barbecues people never think how am I going to put it out um, sometimes it's malicious gangs of 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 of, of uh, reprobates coming out and just setting fire to somewhere for something to do for a kick i don't think if people realized the the, the problems that it causes and particularly the, the threats it has to wildlife they would do that and part of our message has always been education to help people understand the consequences of those actions and by helping them to understand it to make sure that it doesn't happen in the future thankfully stopping fires is mostly about common sense don't discard lit cigarettes. Don't have naked flames uh, in moorland areas. If you're going to have a, a picnic and use a mobile barbecue, do it in a proper picnic area. Don't run the risk, risk of the wind whipping up, blowing it onto the open moor, and before you know it, you've got an environmental catastrophe.